Welcome to the Road to Redemption podcast with your host, Cam Williamson. Each week, Cam sets out to shatter the labels and stigmas associated with mental health awareness by giving life lessons and raw overviews of events happening around the world. What is up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williams. And look, do me a favor. You know what it is. Hit the thumbs up button. If you're not doing that, you're not getting into the rest of the episode. Hit it. Unlock it. It's going to do a bunch of lights and stuff. It's fun. Subscribe. If you haven't, then we can be real friends because we're you, know, you subscribe to my channel. You're going to see what my life looks like going forward after this Johnny Depp trial. But right now, while you're locked into the trial, hit the bell. I'll tell you every single time I put something up when it goes live. Bang, because I'm doing these things, premiering live every day, 4.30. Good to see you guys. 4.30 on a Tuesday. We're talking day 21. This morning, boring. Didn't mean to rhyme it like that, but hey, when things work out, you take it, right? We're getting to the slower part, part of this trial. This morning started with a motion to strike, the you know motion to dismiss. This is essentially the same point we reached couple weeks back where everyone was like what uh amber's team is is motioning for mistrial yeah and we pretty much knew it was going to fail that's very standard in cases like this so this was johnny's turn to go hey we think our evidence shows that this case is bogus her testimony she's caught up in all kinds of lies that has no evidence backings and the fact that the judge had to push it all the way down to like reading her answer which her answer was very fancy court talk that stems down to the jury is the one that decides that deserves to make this decision so that was essentially the same thing that they concluded when amber tried to motion for the mistrial nobody was really surprised i think more people were surprised at how hard amber's team actually had to defend against this one because there was a lot ben chu my guy in his you know rehearsals for his closing argument. That's what it sounded like to me. Even at one point, sorry, I got a film in my throat for my coffee. At one point, the um, Rottenborn, fucking hate that guy. Oh, I don't know who I dislike more. I think it's still Elaine because she spent more time, but I really don't like Rottenborn. I don't like his whole just being of, you know, I don't like him. Um, there was a moment where he goes, I don't like how Mr. Chu is looking at the cameras and playing to the cameras. Bitch. This is an open trial. And then, and then he had the cojones to sit there and go, this is unethical. The things he's saying are completely wrong and inappropriate. Rottenborn, did you take a nap over there for the last couple of weeks while Elaine was up there run, running her yet? Do you miss everything that your team has been doing? I know you've been doing a whole lot of nothing, like keeping your head low while Elaine's up there talking. Smart move on your future for your career. But you can't act like you're not equally responsible for what's been going on here. And the far-stretching questions and the far reaches to, to get testimonies to try to sound and fit certain narratives. My guy, you might want to relax a little bit about talking to the media. You big dumb dick. All right, let's talk about what happened after that. It was dismissed. Evidence deserves to be decided by the jury. We talk about that. So the first witness that we saw today was surprising to me, right? Everyone's been expecting Johnny Depp to come back. We've been hearing Kate Moss on Wednesday. We don't know. I'm suspecting we may see Johnny today. If that's the case, you guys will probably see a second video from me. The witness we got was a representative from Warner Brothers who has been the president of DC Comic Films at Warner Brothers since 2018. So he was the president at the time that Amber Heard was, um, I'm not going to say her character's name right because I don't know it, I've never seen the movie, but when she was in Aquaman with Jason Momoa. And he said very clearly that they almost recasted the movie when trying to edit it after she did her part because there was clearly no chemistry with Jason Momoa. He said, and I was surprised because he's not an expert witness, but they allowed it in. Now, he was also a uh, video deposition, but he said that he spoke with Jason Momoa and Jason Momoa said that they had no chemistry. Now, I've seen articles of this. I had, I've done my best to not look into random articles and videos 
that aren't strictly of trial footage. Like, if they've been edited, like, I know that the court trial hasn't really been zooming in on people and stuff like that. So I try hard to keep unbiased shit out of here. While that's hard because I think most people are team depth. So most stuff is playing to that, whether it be entertainment or not. And so anyway, I've seen those articles of Momoa claiming that there was no chemistry between them. It was kind of why he didn't want him to be in the second one. We're going to get to later the negotiations, the contracts, what it means to be having an option on an actress or an actor or a podcaster. That's how I understand um, what they're talking about. But we heard from a lot of entertainment executives or entertainment experts today. Now, a couple of them on the tail end leading up to lunch were former people because we're now Amber Heard has closed her case in chief and we're now in rebuttal stage where Johnny Depp is calling back um, old witnesses to, you know, clear some things up. And we've heard from two very important witnesses that he had presented earlier, in my opinion, two of his worst, that came back. And to a lot of most of today has been covering the countersuit from Amber Heard, which is during this whole process, apparently, first I heard of it, Johnny Depp's other attorney, not associated to this case, so not his legal representation in this defamation case, but another attorney who has represented him in other matters, spoke to the Daily Mail and made some statements, right, about how Amber Heard and her friends, um, you know, created this hoax, and Amber Heard uh, was pretending to be a victim of domestic uh, sexual violence and stuff like this. Essentially... He spoke on what he saw of the case. And the way that the article was written up is it said, Johnny Depp's agent says, or Johnny Depp's lawyer says, so they were taking it as on behalf of Johnny Depp, this is what would happen. So they are taking it as an official statement from Johnny during the trial as, hey, this is what I'm I'm portraying out to the media. And that's not what happened. Now, Was it smart for this Waldman guy to have any comment right now? No, it wasn't. You fuck Johnny. But we don't really know what's up with that. You know, so again, today has been a whole thing of setting up the foundation for this countersuit. But every single witness that Johnny has called in rebuttal has actually come up to show that there is no countersuit. She has no grounds to stand on. And it's also kind of weirdly poking holes into the rest of the trial because it shows the general disinterest by Hollywood or really people in general in Amber Heard if it's not for her relationship with Johnny Depp or being beside Jason Momoa. This, she had a, again, an entertainment expert come and speak Uh, On her behalf, she was the last witness for Amber Heard, and she talked about, you know, she withstood $20 million in potential damages because that's what she could have made in a, you know, Aquaman 3 movie. Well, they were like, no, that's not the case. Everyone kind of knew that, but we had no grounds to back it on because we just knew that, like, Amber Heard ain't getting paid no 20 mil. But you can just say that. And that's been the whole M.O. of the Amber Heard defense side, which is, well, we could just say it. Even if we don't have evidence, we could just say it, whatever. And even if we get in trouble for asking leading questions, we'll just go to what if any, because we found this is a little haiku that the judge likes. What if any starts the question with the word what, so therefore it's not leading because it's direct. Fuck off. It's crazy. So. We get into the executive. He didn't give much. He, I mean, that was a bombshell that he officially, as a DC and uh, Warner Brothers rep, said, yeah, no, we almost recasted her as well. Just said, eh, we almost went another way. And we immediately started talking about that at the wrap of the first one. And then they tried to bring in, <laughs> Elaine did, 
she tries to go, well, there's plenty of pictures going around, movie posters where they're featured together. And the guy goes, yeah, they're edited, just like the movie's edited. We had to do our best to even keep this movie together because of the lack of chemistry. And Elaine goes, so you're claiming you had to falsify a movie. Do you know that Jason Momoa it can't fucking swim like that? You know, he can't breathe underwater. Yeah. Your client's not a real-life fucking mermaid, dummy. Yes, they falsify those superhero movies. Superman can't fucking fly. Or the actor that plays him can't. Oh, guess what? Johnny Depp's not really the fucking Mad Hatter. Can't say he didn't really live on a boat for a period of time because there was stories that he did do that in his method acting days. But these people play characters, Elaine. Everything that you see in front of you has been false. Because your client is a liar. We move on. So the DC rep, again, didn't give much. Elaine falsifying uh, images or video. We talked about Walden. Um, Hurd's team keeps trying to slip in the terminology Depp Waldman statements. Trying to link Johnny Depp directly to the statements. Because they know that they are literally having to grasp at straws. I, I've kind of let that term go in the last couple of days. Um, but it, it's something that when I find myself talking about specifically Rottenborn, he's better at at least finding a straw to grasp on, which is just a word play word he can use. It's not saying it's a strong argument, but it's something. It's not just Elaine standing and go, uh, 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 what if any, uh, and she's just getting fucked up by Camille every single time. And it was like, okay, we're seeing the deterioration further of we all know right at this point there is almost zero chance that there's a juror sitting on that jury that looks at this evidence and goes i believe amber heard right i myself have been very on the side of johnny depp from everything i've seen this time even yesterday at the part that I misremembered about the finger being locked off, which is a huge portion of the case. It's huge. And I thought for somehow Johnny had his hand up in the air and the bottle crashed behind him, lopping the finger off. I, I had my own questions, admitted to that, that even in the misremembering, that's not how it happened. He had his finger on the bar, bottle smashed. I got it for all you fucking people that got mad at me for that. I'm sorry. I remembered now. I went back, I watched it, I posted it. I'm sorry. But even in that... I was able to believe that had a bottle smashed like this behind him and a shard of glass came and chopped the finger off. Again, I'm left-handed, so I'm using my left hand if it makes you guys happier. I know Johnny's right-handed. Had he done that and it lopped off the middle finger on his right hand, I'm trying to do it accurately now. That didn't happen, I'm admitting. But I could have believed that more than anything Amber Heard said. So again... She would also be asking, well, not she, as much as I found it hard to believe, but could, I guess, that a bottle would have smashed a wall, lopped a finger off, I was like, eh, that would be hard, not saying it can't happen, it could, not saying that that's what Johnny said, he didn't, but Amber claims that a glass bottle was inserted into her, let me so your lawyer, Amber, wanted to ask Johnny, which I just posted this clip this morning, about how his finger being like this on a bar, a bottle smashing it, I guess, like this to, to smash and shatter the very pink, you know, tip part of it, to smash it like this and chop off the, some of his, you know, chop off this whole part of his finger and he wants to ask how there's no residual damage to any part of your body. Your client claimed that a glass bottle got put inside of her after she got the fuck beaten out of her by a man with six rings on. We're all evil for even having the question in our head, where's the damage, Amber? I feel bad asking it, but where's the fucking damage, Amber? You had no problem disheveling or out of placing things and snapping photos of shit. You've now been caught in the last, what is it, week, weekend 
of the pictures that you staged of Johnny Depp, his dominant hand is in his pocket and your bruise kit is just barely almost out of focus. How Johnny Depp's team hasn't brought that up yet, I'm guessing that's going to get brought up in the closing arguments along with the you know, makeup palette not coming out until 2017. All these little digs are starting to come in. Ben Chu got quite a few of them this morning in the dismissal um, motion because he admitted how, hey, I don't really give a shit if Amber bounced out on the ACLU after the grimy shit they tried to pull getting all the attention on the article uh, using Johnny's name. That's how we're proving our shit right here. But eh, we'll ignore that. You didn't pay for sick and dying children, Amber. And that's when, uh, you know, Rotten whatever nuts, Rotten nuts went off on it. said, choose playing to the camera. No, he's not. Your client's a piece of shit. Straight up. It's hard to, it, you can't even, you can't even argue it at this point. All right, let me, let me keep going. I'm getting off on some rants. I apologize. So we move on to Johnny Depp's. Again, this guy is a transactional um, attorney. So he's actually a transactional attorney in Hollywood. He's the guy that makes deals or makes sure that the offer that is sent to an actor in their contract ends up being the offer that they understand and receive in the very end of it. So we get that. He was saying that on no way, and he compared you know Momoa's career very well to Amber's and showed how there's no correlation they tried to compare all day yesterday. Amber Heard to like the um, I always forget Gal Gadot who played um, um, Wonder Woman, Chris Pine who played Captain Kirk. I almost said Captain Spock. I don't want the star people to come for me. I don't watch those movies, so I apologize. If I don't watch Star Trek or Star Wars, so I apologize. Don't come for me. I've never seen them. Um, and then, so that's I didn't know that kind of stuff. I know who Chris Pine is. He's a huge actor. He was also in Wonder Woman. That must have been why he was brought up because he was the male co lead to the to Wonder Woman. Got that. Jason Momoa. I forgot he played Conan, but the Barbarian. I obviously knew he was in Game of Thrones. Never knew he was in Baywatch. So he's had a long career. Also, he had played Aquaman in movies prior to the Aquaman movie. And not just the Justice League movie. He had portrayed Aquaman prior. I didn't know that either. So again, not comparable in any way. I heard one person compare Amber Heard to, um, what's her name, Angelina Jolie. I thought that was fair. One kind of big movie, right? Tomb Raider was a huge movie, especially during the time. And then what, really nothing? She attached herself to Brad Pitt, and she was known for that. They did Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but Angelina Jolie was really nothing but just kind of a uh, word around town in Hollywood after Tomb Raider. She had a lot of promise, right? And I think Amber Heard had a lot of promise around Hollywood. I remember myself, now again, I'm not a superhero fan, but I could have swore that when Aquaman came out, it was not well received. Even superhero fans were like, eh, you missed. And, and I think the general term or tone was, we love Jason Momoa. He's awesome. Just don't like the movie. It's just not a good movie. So if DC is now coming out and going, ah, oh, we really had to stretch to make this chemistry work of the male and the female main relationship of the story. Well, guys, what's the biggest fucking draw of Superman? It's Clark Kent and Lois Lane. We get used to him smashing buildings and rocks with his fucking eyes. He's, he's kicking people's ass every week. We want to know that he's still going to be in love at the end of the story. Right? Aquaman's the same thing. He's a fucking fish man. He's a merman. We need the female action in that movie to make it fucking bearable, right? And they want to play down that aspect of things, right? And that that's irritating. So again, they tried all day yesterday to compare Amber Heard to actors and actresses that she is in no way comparable to. And that's what this guy stated very clearly. He got into the difference between options and contracts. Let's do that quickly. I will do it from the standing that I have of it. So I will put it out as general terms as I can to you guys. Having an option, right? So I've made all my podcasts over the years, right? Say that uh, NBC comes to me and goes, Cam, we want to pick up the show and we want to put it on our network for one year. We're going to pay you $200,000 for that one year, but we're going to put your show on there. We carry the option for the next three years that we can either continue to keep your show on 
and and run different spinoffs of it. Maybe next year we had a co-host, maybe three years down the line, but we have the option to keep it on. We are not obligated to keep you on as a, as a talent, as a show on our thing, but we have that option. So you're agreeing when you sign to do the Justice League, as Amber did, but for me it would be when you're agreeing to sign on to our network, you're agreeing to get paid the $200,000 and then whatever money I'm telling you you're going to get for a possible uh, second year, third year. So I'm agreeing up front that if I sign for sec second year or third year, outside of extenuating circumstances, I'm already agreeing to the amount of money or the bonus that we're all anticipating that I'm going to get from joining a major network going from being independent, which is pretty much what you are as a small actor, right? I'm going from YouTube, myself produced an indie film to a network, a big network where they're going to help distribute me out to the masses. That's what being on a big studio movie does for someone, right? So they're going to say, yes, we project that you are going to rise from this. We're going to cause the rise along with your talent. So we are going to pay you more. But I am not going to, and this is where you're seeing a lot of scuffles in podcasting, in music, and in all this stuff right now, where people go, yes, I agreed for you to pay me $300,000 a year when I only had 150,000 subscribers on YouTube or whatever. But now this year in the things we're doing now, look at the reach I have. I'm worth so much more. And then the, the, the mother company, the host company, the network, whoever is going. Yeah. But again, we talked about this. We planned this. So this is all well and good. But Talk to me in three years. And then lawyers get involved. They find clauses. People break up. People leave networks. People leave movies. They leave franchises. It fucking happens. But what doesn't happen when you're an undeniable fucking star like Jason Momoa and you've established yourself and people want to work with you, they will, in rare occasions, renegotiate to keep you. Because why? There's the value in the market for you. They're not doing that if they're trying to recast you as soon as you wrap on the first one. They're damn sure not doing that if they had to fit you in editorially to have chemistry with the with the main star. Which technically, I didn't even know. She's third lead. There's another guy. I forget his name. James something. Jason Momoa, that guy. And then Amber Heard is third lead. Technically, she's like second lead because she's the romantic interest. Okay. So that's what that guy came in with. All that type of information of why that lady yesterday was just completely full of nonsense. But again, we all knew that. So some of this is just stretching out the obvious. Then we bring back in the social media expert analysis guy, who I call Johnny Depp's worst witness, possibly the worst witness to ever grace um, the stand. Now, we've seen a lot of witnesses since, and I think a lot of the disrespect and unethical behavior by a lot of the witnesses, a lot of them being expert witnesses, matched him and if not beat him he came back today in quite the redemptive story we like that here on the road to redemption podcast so we're going to talk about it he brought up all this um again we're talking about amber's countersuit she's claiming that damages happened and she lost or at least campaigns were paused her participation and promotion and stuff was paused after the waldman statements came out i am saying waldman statements because i'm assuming that johnny depp did not plan this, right? I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt in that situation. So he came up and showed very clearly, I don't need to draw it out any more than this. There was a few uh, hashtags that he got to again say in court, which is hashtag Amber Turd, hashtag justice for Johnny, and hashtag we just don't like you Amber. And he was showing how these were actually trending prior to Waldman putting those statements out. And then they actually kind of died off after he put them out. Let me say this. I've used Amber Turd, I've used Justice for Johnny, and I think I've actually used We Just Don't Like You Amber. Let me tell you how hashtags work from people that have grown on my Facebook. Shout out to everybody that just joined. I've gotten 10,000 people started following my private, my personal Facebook page that I did not have open to the public just by posting my clips for my family and stuff that like, hey, this is what I'm up to. I've gotten even more of a following than I ever tried to build on Facebook from talking about this by using these hashtags that just popped up when I started typing in hashtag Johnny Depp. 
So, like, people don't know the source of hashtags. Hashtag justice for Johnny Depp. You use that when you see it pop up, when Johnny Depp's trial is going on, and you're leaning on his side. You, It doesn't... Because if that started the very first time in the Waldman statements, most of us using it don't fucking know that. Nor do we care. I didn't hear anything about these Waldman statements until after, like, Raquel Pennington's um, testimony. That's when I heard this was all an issue when it claimed that his, the friends um, hoaxed this big elaborate event. So, again, I, we're, it's getting to the point now where we're literally having to dissect the fact that Amber isn't shit in Hollywood and never really has been. And if you want to, which is dumb on her part because she's the one that opened the countersuit, we can explore even more that Hollywood didn't like you. They actually thought you were kind of untalented and couldn't even form chemistry with somebody that most women would literally pass out on the floor in love just by standing next to him. And you can't find chemistry with this guy? I would walk up and give him a big old hug. Don't know him. But he's just a, he, look, he's that kind of guy. He's got that aura off of him. You see him, you want to just, you, you want to put your hands on him in a good, in a hugging, embracing way. He's got that what what chemistry are you missing it's jason momoa i'm a i'm a straight dude and i'm standing here in front of you telling you if jason momoa is right here in front of me i'm gonna find a way to have chemistry with that guy because he's a cool guy he's tatted up he's big as shit come on you can't find chemistry with jason momoa then you got real interpersonal problems you got to deal with and for that it's day 21 i love you guys so much I hope you had fun. I tried to up the energy a little bit for this one. It was a hell of a boring morning. Again, if Johnny Depp takes the stand again, I'll see you guys in the second video today. But for right now, that's going to be it until tomorrow, day 22. Love you.